Aleyhisselam Efendimiz Hazretlerinin Aziz Fat Münevver Musa Harun Şereflerine salavat şerife getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayrola. Ali Esbacı Tahiret Evladı Resul-i Sabzün Efendilerimizin ve Sayr-ı Enbiya Zem ve Resul-i Kiram Hazırat'ın Erva'ı Şeriflerine Pirimiz Bilal Ahbeş Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin Mihmandar Resul-i Kibriya Eyüp Sultan Halid bin Zeyd Abayü Belensar Radiyallahu Anh Şah Nürşidan, Şeh Hacı Muhammed Bahat bin Nakşibendi el-Buhari, Mevlana Celaleddin el-Rumi, Mevlana Ziyadun Halid el-Bağdadi, Sahibü Zaman, Kıbleti İslam, Şeh Mevlana Muhammed Nazım Adel el-Ekani, Sahibü Seyf Şeh Abdülkerim el-Kübüs el-Rabbani Kaddesallahu Esraruhum Hazıratın Ervahi için, Hademülül Harameynü Şerifeyn, Yavuz Sultan Selim Han, Ebul Fethvel Mahazi Fatih Sultan Mehmet Han, ve Serdar Hakan Sultan Abdülhamid Han Cennet Mekan, bir devse aşıyan hazıratına, evrahına ve avun inayetine, alel husus bir camilin banisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş, iman mezin kayın ve cemaatinin ve kahve ehli imanın ervahı için, Allah rızası için el Fatiha. Yavuzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, minnallaha ve melaikete ve yusallun alen nebi. Ya eyvellezine amenu sallu aleyhi ve sellimu teslima. Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed. Allahu ekber, Allahu ekber. Allah ekber Allah ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayya aleyhissalâh Hayya aleyhissalâh Hayya aleyhissalâh Hayya aleyhissalâh Allahu ekber, Allahu ekber La ilahe illallah La ilahe illallah Sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Muhammed Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmedullah ta'ala, nasafir ve şer ve en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Neşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluh. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve sahbet tabi khulafe rahşinun mahdin min ba'di. Ve zâmâti ala tahkik, ahzuz zâmihu ala vakil khulafe rasil ala tahkik. Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar, Osman ve Ali, Muala Bakr, Sabit Tabi'in, Zidun Allah Ta'ala, Ali, Mecma'in, Ya Eyyuhal Mu'minul Hazirun, Zidun Allah Ta'ala, Fe inna Allahum el-lezine, Fe kavel el-lezine hum muhsinun. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin, Ve salatu ve selamu ala aşrafil enbiya'in ve mursalin, Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the Universes. All praises are due to Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. All praises are due to Allah who says in the Holy Quran, in Surat Al-Yasin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And they say, when is this promise to be fulfilled, if you are truthful? They are just waiting for one shout, which will surprise them. While they are arguing, then they cannot make any will or testament, nor can they return to their own people. The trumpet shall be blown, and behold, from the graves they rush to their Lord, saying, Disaster to us, who has raised us from our sleeping place. This is what Ar-Rahman promised. And the messengers spoke the truth. It is but one shout. And behold them brought together before us. This day no soul is wronged in the least, and you will not be repaid except for what you used to do. Truly, the companions of paradise this day are joyously busy. They and their associates in pleasant shade on thrones 
reclining. Theirs is the fruit of their good deeds, and theirs is whatever they wish. Salam. The word from a merciful Lord. But stand apart today, O you criminals, on this day. Did I not order you, O you sons of Adam, that you worship not Shaitan? Truly he is your open enemy, and that you worship me. That was a straight path. Did you have no sense? This is the hell which you were promised. Burn in it this day. For what you used to deny, this day we seal up their mouths and their hands will speak to, to us and their feet will give testimony of what they used to do. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the intercessor of all mankind, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam. Holy Prophet wasalam, once said to a Sahabi, Ya Abil Kahil, that person who reads the Darud al-Sharif three times every day and night out of love and respect for me, truly Almighty Allah considers it necessary to forgive the daily sins of that person. May peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the Fawkhulaf al-Rashidin, Hazrat al-Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar al-Faruq, Hazrat Usman al-Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the Mashaykh of the Naqshbandi Way, the Rahbers of the Prophetic Caravan. May peace and blessings be upon the Ottoman Sultans, who held high the Sunnah and Adalat of the Holy Prophet and established the Divine Nizam on earth. May Allah honor those who love them. May Allah humiliate those who hate them. Amen. O believers, all praise and thanks are due to Allah who led us to witness this holy month of Rabbul Awal and led us to honor the mawlid of our beloved Rasulullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever weak service we have submitted during this holy month for the sake of our holy prophet and for the sake of our shaykh. O believers, Holy Prophet والسلام, is teaching us that we must take accounting of ourselves. We have to have sense. We have to think. In the ayat that we recited in the beginning from Surah Al Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that it will be said to the people who went to the wrong direction on the day of judgment. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Afalam ta'kunu ta'kilun. Didn't you think? Didn't you have any sense? On the day of judgment, the time for reflection, the time for thinking, it is finished. The time for thinking and using our akal, it is now in this life. Sultan al-Awliya Shem Allah Muhammad Nazim Adil al-Hakani Qadat al-Asir is saying, Everyone will be given his book either in his right or his left hand on the Day of Judgment. That is Haq. The Day of Judgment also is Haq. It is written in all holy books. They will ask you about your children. If you were obeying Allah's orders and taught them their religion. If not, your place is hell. No more time for sleeping. You must wake up. The one is not praying from among the Muslims. He will be sorted out. You will die and no one will intercede for you. This religion is not a joke. People are not thankful to Allah for his favors. Now the walls of their buildings are falling down. Don't stand under them. Don't be cheated. Things are going to happen soon. Be good. That means be a good servant to Allah. Ask yourself, judge yourself by your intelligence. You are not making sajda. You are not thankful to Allah. Turn back and ask for forgiveness. Nobody knows when his time has come. The souls of many will be refused entrance at the door of heavens. They will not be accepted in the divine presence. 
من آو شیخ صاحب الصی شیت عبد الكریم الكبری زیر آبانی که زن صیر سیم Put yourself out and look where you entered this world. Where are you now? Where are you going? And what have you done? Look, check and calculate. You don't need anybody to check for you. You can check it for yourself. Sit and calculate. You will know. Don't cheat yourself. You cannot cheat yourself. Lock yourself in a room and say to yourself, to your ego, look, it's only you and I. There's nobody else. Let's see. You did this today. Okay. What was the intention when you were doing this? Hmm. Your intention was to fool this person to get this? Say to yourself, to your ego, you are a very bad one. Say to yourself, before anybody tells you, say to yourself. Slowly you may find you are fixing, you are correcting yourself. If you don't question yourself and if you are liking what you are doing all the time, then something is wrong with you. Because you are a creature, you are a man filled with mistakes. You have to find mistakes. If you don't find mistakes, then what are you, a prophet? The prophets are gone, they are innocent. Even though the prophets have also been tested according to their level, they are gone. Are you a saint? It has to be showing with your actions, with your deeds, and with your intentions if you are a saint or not. If you are, then test yourself according to that level. But if you are a normal person, then the test has to be according to that. You will find out what you are doing. You don't need anybody to test you, to tell you this right and this is wrong. Judge yourself by yourself. And you will find a voice coming out from your heart saying, this is right and this is wrong. No matter how much others say to you and praise you, saying, no, this was good, then you will know the reality yourself. No, I did wrong. This is the thinking that we must do in this life, not when we're in the grave, not on Judgment Day. When that addressing is coming on the Day of Judgment, didn't you have any sense? Didn't you think it is talking about this kind of reflection? So what do we have to look at? Don't look at yourself as so good and as so big and so perfect. Look at your mistakes. Look at the th wrong things that you did. Look at the people that you hurt. Look at the damage you have done and look how to fix it before you leave this life and how to never do it again. In the Ahir Zaman, Mankind is only looking to see the things that have been done to them. Everyone becomes a victim, but no one is thinking what they have done to others. But when you are doing that, when you are thinking and trying to fix that time, you are not just thinking, but your thinking is turning into tauba. Your thinking is turning into a worship. Some people came to Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu an. Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu an was one of the wisest Sahabis. He was a son of Hazrat Abbas, who was the uncle of the Holy Prophet. So they came and they asked him, How many major sins are there? Are there seven? And Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu an said, the number of major sins is closer to 700 than only seven. But no sin is too huge if you ask forgiveness for it. And no sin is too small if you keep doing it stubbornly. And Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is also saying, truly, the believer views his sins as if he was sitting under a mountain, terrified that it's going to fall on him. That is how the believer looks at his sins. The wicked person, the evil person, looks at his sins as if they were just a fly passing over his nose.
So what does this teach us? It teaches us that the believer, he looks at his own mistakes, his own sins, as if it was a mountain, as if it is very big. It is the wicked person, the munafik, who looks at his own sins and says, this is something very small. It's just a minor sin. I don't need to worry about this because Allah will definitely forgive me. That kind of thinking from the hypocrite, it is a huge trap from shaitan. Sahib al-Sayyaf is telling us, you must worry. You must worry for ahirat. We have been sent to this world to earn our ahirat. Did you earn your ahirat today? At least did you make promise today to live for ahirat? Everything that you do in this world, did you promise today that you're doing it for the sake of Allah, preparing yourself for judgment day, for ahirat? If you are doing that, then you have no worry. You have only one worry, ahirat. That never ends. That is the one that keeps pushing you continuously forward. That is a time that people will know too, this one is running for Allah. If you are running for dunya, then your energy is going to finish. And when the energy is finishing, then your hope is going to finish. And shaitan is coming to you saying, don't worry, your Lord is so merciful. You don't have to do it. He's going to forgive you. This is what he is saying. Who's warning us of this? Allah is saying this to us. This is how that shaitan is coming to fool you. Yes, your Lord is merciful with you when you have the breath of life and carrying it. That's a mercy to wake up, to shake yourself up, to say, what is it that I'm doing? When am I going to wake up? Ask that question to yourself. If you didn't yet, then start right now. Push yourself now. Don't leave it for tomorrow because tomorrow may be too late. We must take our own mistakes very seriously. And we must not take those mistakes. We should not take those mistakes to go into anxiety and depression and hopelessness because all that is coming from shaitan. To say, oh, I am doomed. There is no hope. No. That is not the attitude of the believer. Holy Prophet is saying, have the taqwa of Allah wherever you are. Have the fear and have the faith of Allah wherever you are. Follow up the bad deeds with a good deed to erase it. And deal with others with beautiful character. As our Shaykh is reminding us again and again, if you do something wrong, run to do something right. That bad action that we did, it must make us to run to do good actions. That thinking of knowing that we have done major sins in the presence of Allah, it should make us to be in a constant state of running to become better, to control that ego that is pushing us towards disobedience, to sit with those that will teach us how to do good. Once we know and understand with real thinking, that yes, I am a person who commits the major sins and I need to run towards mercy, then we become eligible for the shafaat of the Holy Prophet He's saying in Hadith Sharif, which our Ottoman grandfathers were putting everywhere, my intercession is for the people of major sins amongst my ummah. That type of thinking it will save a man because the man is always going to run to do better. And we know from our Shaykh that he was always looking at us and saying, you can do better. That is the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Hazrat Yawf ibn Malik is telling us that once the Holy Prophet came into the masjid with his cane. He saw that a man had hung a bundle of brittle, dry dates as a charity for people to take. The Holy Prophet started hitting those dates with his cane and he said, if he wanted, he could have given better charity than this. Truly the one who gave this in charity will eat brittle, dry dates on the Day of Judgment. The Holy Prophet and his inheritors, they are training us to present the best to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to do things in a lazy way, 
Not to give things from the worst of ourselves, but to run to present the best from ourselves to Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Rahman, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Is there any reward for ihsan, for in excellence, other than ihsan? Tasawuf is the way of ihsan. Tasawuf is the way of excellence. Because the masters of tasawuf, the shaykhs, they will keep polishing you. Keep polishing you until you become acceptable to be pre presentable. You are not going to find that training through books. You cannot. Or through scholarship. Or even through so many rituals and fasting and praying. You will only find that through the hands of one who himself went through that training in a chain going back to the Holy Prophet That is the way of the training of shaykhs. Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi Qadr explaining this. He is saying, if the beloved sprinkles plaster on your head, treat it like the most fragrant musk, because inside you lives a hidden enemy. And it cannot be cast out except with harshness. The man who beats a stick on a rug, it is not aimed at the rug. The whole purpose is to get the dust out. Layers of dust are within you, making a thick veil of ego. That dust isn't going to go away with just one hit. With each harshness, with each hit, little by little, that dust is swept away from the heart, sometimes sleeping, sometimes awake. Therefore, everything on the path of Allah is good. Because in the end, He will make the man pure and beautiful. Think of how the tanner rubs all kinds of filth and poison into the hide to make beautiful soft leather. Even though the animal skin has no idea what's going on. Oh, believers, and for us to come to the realization of our major sins, for us to be counted in that hadith of the Holy Prophet we must follow the way that is being described by Hazrat Imaulana. Our Shaykh Sahib al Sayyid is describing. He's saying, Murids can only learn and progress if they listen and follow. If they take what they learn and apply it to their lives, if you don't apply it to your life, then it's as if words are entering from one ear and coming out from the other side. There is going to be no progress. You may think you are making progress, but shaitan has hundreds of thousands of ways to fool people. It fooled millions and is ready to fool millions. Except those who hold tightly to the rope of Allah and they do not separate. Allah is saying to us, He's saying, hold on to the rope of Allah and do not separate. The rope of Allah is not a rope coming down from the sky that you're going to hold. First, you have to know what the rope of Allah is. If you don't know the rope, then how are you going to hold on to that rope? In the army, if a soldier is not learning how to listen and obey the one that has only one stripe, then how is he going to obey the general? How is he going to be able to reach to the general? Even those who are going to become generals in the future time, they have to be under the training of that one who has one stripe. He is doing that. That is his job. When they come from the outside with all the wrong characteristics, his job is first to put them in training and to give them some discipline. When they are learning the discipline, then slowly they may reach to their ranks. Otherwise, they are not reaching anywhere. Only illusions and delusions will be happening. And if that one is not able and capable to listen, to learn and to follow the orders of the one with one stripe or two stripes, then he's not going to know how to act in the presence of the general. With one wrong move that he's going to do in the presence of the general, he may receive a very heavy punishment for that. Every army in this world that still has discipline go according to this. Otherwise, no army can stand. We are here to be part of this Jamaat and to be part of the mission of our Shaykh. We must make intention to run for discipline, put it in our lives, for manners, to put it in our lives. 
We must run to take advice and put it in our lives. That time we are honoring our Shaykh and honoring his mission. Otherwise, this dunya is very dangerous. This grave is very dangerous. And our Ahirat will be very dangerous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in safety. The new month that is coming brings the urs of one of the greatest saints that came. Ghaus al-Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Gilani. Inshallah, we're ending with his dua. He's saying, Ya Rabbi, present us all to your Holy Prophet والسلام, and to our father Ibrahim. Ya Rabbi, do not make us tyrants to one another. Make us merciful to one another and include us all in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu mulku wa hamdik shan qadir la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu mulku wa hamdik shan qadir la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu mulku wa hamdik shan qadir la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna zalimun la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna zalimun la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna zalimun subhan kudusun wa bina rabbi mulayyad subhan kudusun wa bina rabbi subhan kudusun wa bina rabbi inna dina illallah al-islam